Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Truck Guy Joe. Thank you for your time and thank you for joining me. On today's upload, I'm gonna give you a walk around of the trailer, a one year review. It's been a year since I bought the trailer. I've had some time to use it, put some miles on it, haul some different items. So I figured this would be a good time to give you an update and let you know what my ownership experience has been like over the last 12 months. Let's do a quick refresher on what this trailer actually is, manufacturer, specs, and type. Now I've heard this pronounced three different ways. It's either Moritz, Moritz, or Moritz. I'm not sure which way it's pronounced, so if I'm butchering your name, I apologize. I've said it three different ways. I've been corrected three different times. So <laughs> this is the manufacturer of the trailer. It is a 17,000 pound GVWR and it has 8,000 pound axles. Obviously it's a gooseneck. The deck itself is 22 feet flat and it has a two position dovetail. So right now the dovetail is in the up position. You can also lower it so it'll be on an angle for loading and unloading vehicles. And they give you a jack that goes right in the back and it's held by pins underneath here. There's a pin on each side. Sorry, I know it's kind of dark, you can't really see. I tried to shoot this outside, but there's a little bit too much wind noise, so I'm filming inside the building today. So I have a total of 27 feet flat usable. So that's the first thing I'm gonna talk about. Should I have gone longer? Overall, the trailer's gotten the job done. There's been a few situations where I could have used a longer deck. So in the future, two things I may consider. Going to a 30 or 35 foot, and I also may consider the hydraulic dovetail. Let's talk about the length. There's been a few times where I've had a couple of cabin chassis on here, the Silverado medium duties, they can be very long and you don't want anything hanging off the back and you have to watch your tongue weight, you can't put too much on the front. Also, I've had a couple of landscape bodies that made it close, but two things about this trailer. Number one, take a look at this beam. I like on this trailer, the Moritz, Moritz or Moritz, however you want to say it. <laughs> This beam is on an angle, which gives me some extra clearance rather than this coming straight up. So I got more room based on that being on an angle. Okay, and while we're over here, I haven't had to use the winch yet, but I do have a worn winch in case I have to pick up a vehicle that's you know dead or disabled, whatever the case may be. And now to the back. I don't mind cranking the two, posi two position dovetail. I went this route because I like the clearance. I've yet to scrape this trailer in the up position. There's about 23 inches difference of clearance. So when you're going in and out of parking lots, gas stations, you're not dragging the back of the dovetail. I like having that in the up position. It works out pretty nice. Now, Chris Trott, Erie Fleet Solutions. Chris is an awesome fabricator. He's a local guy. You may have seen him on Undercover Billionaire for Erie. Chris Trott, awesome fabricator, made me these brackets. And what these brackets do, I swap these out. And what it allows me to do is the, the uh, ramps can be on an angle. So kind of the same principle as the front beam leans this way, I can get the ramps to lean back and be a, you know fixed nicely rather than use a ratchet strap or something like that. So if I need a little more room for something that's hanging off, like a, a body that's gonna hang off a little bit, those got the job done. So Chris, thanks again for that. But overall, the length has been great. It's worked great for this application. The reason why I didn't go with the adjustable dovetail, the hydraulic is it adds weight to the trailer. If you add weight, it takes away from payload. Also, there's more moving pieces, more things to go wrong. You've got to have a battery, a pump, you know, uh, the hydraulic pump, the hoses, things that can go wrong. And if it fails, then you're kind of dead in the water. This is mechanical. I crank it. It's great. And it gives an old guy like me a good workout. Back to the 8,000 pound axles. As you can see, those are the upgraded wheels, 17 and a half inch on the 8,000 pound axle and the tires have been great. I've got about 10,000 miles on the trailer so far. And the way I know that is the Chevrolet has a, a trailering app. On the Trevor, Chevrolet trailering app, it keeps track of your, the miles you travel when you're hooked to the trailer for a maintenance standpoint. Uh, tires have been good. I have rotated them. I am due to have the trailer state inspected. It's due this month in September. I'm gonna get it done. I also have, I'll get the bearings packed and greased but no failures on the tires. The tires have been great. They're wearing even, no complaints there. I would maybe consider buying the same tire again, given the uh, way these have worn and held up very well. And I'm gonna pull the trailer outside eventually because I wanna show you some stuff underneath uh, and we're gonna need a little more light to do that. So when we get outside, I'll show you more close about the trailer. 
the toolboxes. Let's talk about these. So I definitely wanted storage. So I have matching toolboxes on both sides. These are buyers. They're aluminum. I was going to go stainless steel, but I couldn't get the size I wanted in stainless. But that's okay. I went aluminum. Uh, they are definitely doing the job for me as far as storage goes. Uh, matching boxes on both sides. But one thing I want to show you is every once in a while I get a little concerned about you know these are tall boxes so from 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 bottom to the top they're tall and they actually if I get down here they're a little bit lower than what the jacks are it might be hard to see but I've had a couple situations where I thought oh boy I'm getting close as far as almost rubbing a box in a couple of situations where there was a transition uh, so I may have could have gone a little bit shorter on the box but the depth is good two areas here that I upgraded one would be the jacks so these are dual jacks and they're two speed so they have high range in low range, if you will. So when they're in low range, you crank a lot, the jacks move slow, but if you had a loaded trailer, it would be easy to take the trailer off of the truck to raise it up. I typically keep them in high range. It's extremely rare that I have to unload with something on the trailer, but I just wanted that option. I wanted it there. Uh, so dual jacks, definitely nice for stability, makes it nice for parking the trailer and uh, just having a nice stable. And I technically could load and unload without being hooked to the truck. It, it could be done if I needed to. I would recommend dual speed jacks, uh, dual jacks with the dual speed. Another area is the Linex. I did have the front of this trailer. You can see this is Linex material. Had it done local, Linex of Erie, Jim Franz. Sprayed the front of the trailer of the box, in front of the toolboxes. That has held up very well. And one thing I did is I had them also apply Linex Premium. So it's kind of almost like a clear coating that goes over the black. That way stuff that sticks to it comes off a lot easier. Uh, it almost gives like a clear coat protective coating so it stays shiny and nice looking and I can get debris and dirt and grime off uh, with a lot less effort. Again, shout out to Linux of Erie, Jim Franz, do a great job, appreciate those guys. Now to the ramps. I did buy a set of aluminum ramps. These are pretty heavy duty, 10,000 pound. And the purpose for carrying these is even though this is a low profile deck, I did order this with the low profile. So the deck height is 33 inches instead of 36. And the low profile has served me very well as far as that extra clearance. If I have a small box truck, that three inches can make the difference between fitting under a bridge. Also, center of gravity. You get a nice ride and your load angle, your approach angle is better by having the lower deck. But there are still instances when I have trucks that are so long. These cabin chassis, two-wheel drive ones, are so long and low that when you get the front tire up to the deck here, so you might get the front tire up here, but there might be a suspension component, exhaust system, something hanging down that you cannot clear the, uh, the transition. So I use the ramps and add them to these ramps to give me a better approach angle. And ideally, I just I start the back tires. You get the back tires up on the aluminum ramp and it changes your approach angle and you can clear and get right on. And they've worked great. Uh, very happy with those ramps. I recommend them and I do carry them because you never know when you're going to need them. I just keep them strapped down. Never know when you might find some on the side of the road you want to snag. When I bought the trailer, I also purchased an aftermarket trailer tire uh, pressure monitor system here. So these track the tire pressure and temperature and they just screw on. It's made by Easy Tire. And I went with Easy Tire for two reasons. Number one, the, the opening, the diameter on this wheel. Uh, Chevrolet, let me just backtrack here. Chevrolet offers tire pressure sensors for trailers. It's part of the trailering app. So you can have a travel trailer or enclosed trailer, whatever the case may be, use the Chevy sensors and it'll read back to the truck. So on your uh, touch screen your information display you can monitor pressure and temperature but the problem is they only go up to 100 pounds these tires uh the the rating on them the weight rating and the ply they allow for 120 pounds so the chevy ones wouldn't really work for me because i want to put these at the correct cold pressure setting 120 and monitor that and then secondly on the 17 and a half inch wheels the opening the diameter for the valve stem on these wheels was too large the chevy ones didn't fit so Two strikes against Chevy on that. They only read up to 100 pounds and they don't fit every single wheel, so that's okay. Went with the Easy Tire. And here's the monitor for Easy Tire. Uh, this thing does a great job. It's very easy to read, it's very easy to program, and it basically goes around and flashes you uh, pressure and temperature. And I also like this because of the alerts. If you start losing pressure slowly or quickly, it's gonna alert you. If temperatures get high, it'll alert you. And the biggest thing you're looking for is to get on the side of the road or pull off and get the safety so you can quickly change the tire and also prevent possibly shredding one completely and not having to pull down the spare. As I mentioned, I did order this with a hitch mounted winch. We'll just call it that. So basically I got a worn winch, mounts just like a winch. So here's the, the winch plate here and the work lights also do a nice job. Now I do have the lights inside the building, the garage door open, but you can kind of still see when I flip them, 
Uh, they still light up the building. These do a nice job for loading and unloading at night. They're super bright, they're hidden away, tucked away. Uh, happy with these, they've been great for backing up, backing in, loading, so definitely recommend these lights. I would definitely do them again, like where they're located. Uh, I like how O'Reilly Equipment did the switch. It's a nice clean install, they're out of the way. Definitely do a nice job, thumbs up on those. The coupler itself, I've had no issues with whatsoever. I just keep uh, the ball itself greased up and the coupler itself, keep it greased and lubricated. No issues with the chains, tie downs, electrical plugs, nothing like that. And then there's the jack for raising the two position dovetail. I just keep that in the bed of the truck. As far as capability goes, weight carrying. So again, this is a 17,000 pound with 8,000 pound axles. And as you know, with goosenecks, you can distribute your weight. So some of the weight does go on the neck of the trailer, gets transferred to the truck. So I have weighed this trailer, it's just under 7,000 pounds, and that is with the toolboxes loaded up the way you see them, with the ramps, and that also includes, uh, oh, the spare tire, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember I was gonna go there. A spare tire does stay mounted there, uh, not without the winch, the winch will probably add another 100 pounds. So we're just under 7,000 pounds, uh, gross vehicle weight of the trailer is 17,000, so that leaves you about 10,000 pounds of payload, but keep in mind, uh, you got 16,000 for the rear axles, but you also can move your weight so you can transfer some to the truck. I did a completely separate video on how to figure out gross combination, loading the trailer, loading the truck, and not going over the truck weight, axle weights, etc. Check that video out. But in general, this basically way I'm set up here with single wheels has worked great for the kind of things that I carry. I'm not carrying huge tandem dump trucks. I am carrying more uh, half ton to one ton pickup trucks, light duty dumps. I can put a gas dump truck on here. I can even put a diesel dump on here. One ton works good. Even certain medium duty trucks I can haul on this trailer. It was all built around the truck. So a little backstory. I actually had ordered the trailer before the truck was ordered and I matched the trailer to the truck. So if you're wondering, yes, there's DOT numbers on the truck. I have a Class A CDL, so there's the DOT numbers. This is a Class A combination set up here. The truck is capable of 29,700 pounds. The GVW of the truck is 12,100 pounds. So if you take 12,100, add it to the 17 on the trailer, that's 29,100. So in a nutshell, Right now you're looking at 29.1. This is how DOT would look at this truck if they stopped me. Completely empty, no load. 29.1, I am capable of 29.7. And also you gotta watch your axle weight. So basically went with the 17,000 because it matched the truck and kept me under gross combination. But I am over 26,000, so I do have combination, class A CDL, and my weight sticker is a class nine for Pennsylvania. So there you go, class nine sticker. Right there. Overall, there haven't been many negatives with this trailer. It really has done the job. There hasn't been a time where I couldn't use it or I was like, darn it, should have done this, could have done that. Of course, you're always going to think of little things you would like to change overall. But like I mentioned, the two biggest things I might change in the future is longer deck, possibly adjustable dovetail. But keep in mind, when you go bigger, you want to carry more. That would change what the, what the truck's going to have to be. I enjoy having a single rear wheel, not going with a dually because I do drive this as a daily driver and it makes it nice for just daily commute, parking lots, traveling, whatever the case may be. So having a one ton 3,500 single rear wheel is kind of the best of both worlds. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is the finish. Let's talk about the paint finish because I am up in Erie, Pennsylvania. This is the Rust Belt. We get a lot of snow and salt. Now I have made it a point to try not to take this thing out in bad weather, but inevitably it's gonna happen. I have a job to do, I have things I gotta do. So let's look at the paint finish, how it's held up for the first year. It has been out in the salt. And I've done a couple of things to do some preventative maintenance to make this thing last longer in the event I have to put it out there in those harsh elements. So I will pull this outside to show you it better in the sun. It's just the wind noise is so bad. But I do have my normal kind of chips and wear just from having the chains and binders and different things just to, to mount. But overall, I really like the paint finish. It's held up very well. There's no rust on it just yet. But a lot of what you have to do is maintenance. Now you're gonna think I'm crazy but I hand wash this trailer. I have a pressure washer and a foam cannon. I will soak the thing down with a foam cannon, cannon actually hand wash and clean out these pockets and try to make sure I don't leave contaminants on the paint. It's held up very well. And one thing I've done for the winter is I use Crown. You say what you want, everybody's got their opinions, fluid film, wool wax. This is Crown rust protection. I have loaded the underside of this trailer with Crown. It is everywhere I could get it, every nook and cranny on all the beams, all the cross members. 
I even ran the nozzle on this end here and sprayed it so it would get down in the C channel. I mean, I laid underneath this trailer and just went nuts on it and really loaded it up from front to back. So I'm gonna get it outside to show you a little closer that I've only done one application and this thing has been through some snow salt, it's been through rain and that product is still there. Crown, it seeps, it creeps, it finds the nooks and crannies. I also use it on my 2001 Silverado. So that's kind of what prompted me to use it on the trailer is that's a 2001 8 one big block, great truck. I plow snow with that truck. I've got a Boss V plow that I use. That truck is also loaded up with Crown, and that's what's kept the fenders, cab corners, rockers, all that stuff in good condition. And also, the building has a lot to do with it. I'm fortunate that I have the building to store the trailer, clean the trailer, maintain it. Uh, it basically stays inside here unless I'm actually using it. So it's not sitting outside in the hot sun. It's not out there in the rain. It's not getting covered with dew. Uh, so you don't have those drastic temperature changes and you know, you're getting moisture in and out of places. And let's also quickly talk as uh, the paint finish and what it looks like after say, well, let's see, 2006. This trailer is from 2006. Let's go through it again. Is it Moritz, 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 not sure, but this is an 18 foot. Bought this new fixed dovetail Used to have a landscape business, still have the tractor, have a Harley rake, and this trailer has held up very well. Now this one didn't get the Linex, so there is some stone chips going on, but the finish on this truck, you've got your wear, you've got your areas where chains and binders have bitten into it, but this paint has held up. It has not flaked and disappeared. I mean, overall, for being a 2006, this trailer is still in very good condition. Apologize ahead of time for the wind noise, but we're outside now in the sun, so I can give you a better little close-up of the paint finish. So, the areas that are line x which is down this rail. I'll show you inside the building. You've got your normal wear and chips, but overall, uh, these are these are painted. They're not powder coated, so it's uh, actual real real nice heavy thick paint job on these trailers and it's held up very well. It's not flaking and falling off. Uh, but let me show you the crown. Let me get under here. So uh, the crown basically, you know, you're gonna have items stick to it. You're gonna have a little bit of, you know, dust and dirt and gravel, but uh, basically everything under this trailer is sprayed. All these beams are sprayed on the back sides of the beams, you know, behind these marker lights. I mean, I got this stuff everywhere I possibly could. It's all over the axle. Uh, insides and outsides of everything. Uh, you can actually see right here, there's actually a drip. It's still, you can see it right there. It's still actually running off because I really just went over it and took my time front to back, but there is no rust at all. And it looks really good. I'm very happy with that. I'm gonna come back here to show you the back because this also gets a lot of, this gets a lot of wear and tear. So there's the pins for releasing the two position dovetail, but this is all sprayed and protected inside and out, up underneath. So, um, oh, lastly, the deck, holy cow. Let's talk about the deck real quick. I'm gonna step inside the building just because of the wind noise. I treated the deck with a product from Sherwin-Williams. It's actually a clear urethane garage floor sealer that they add shark bite to. So it's a nice gritty surface. So if the deck is wet, if I'm loading or unloading, you have a little more traction or when I step outside of the vehicle and my foot hits the deck, less uh, likely the chance that I would slide. So let me kind of step back out here again real quick. Again, sorry for the wind noise, but you know, I've got all the planks are done. These pieces are done. You can, you can actually kind of see, I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can actually see where the shark bite got a little heavy in spots, but that has held up very well. Nice and gritty. Uh, and I'll probably reapply it at some point. It's only been a year since I put that on and this trailer doesn't really see that bad of weather. So it's actually held up pretty good, but I might do another application. Want to give you just a quick shot of the tires again. So these are Navitrack Power Kings, 10,000 miles on these. I've kept them rotated, but boy, they still have a lot of life on them. They've worn even. I've kept an eye on that because if I had to realign the axles, I would, you know, just in case one of the axles is off a little bit, you will get some, some, some tear and pull on these tires, but boy, they've held up really well. Very happy with the tires. Nice deep tread left. And I did have them balanced. So, you know, these wheels, you know, we'll give you a little bit of a shake just because it's just a kind of a generic bulk steel wheel, if you know what I mean. So I did have them balanced, just try to help with the ride as well. Uh, I have to say that did help a little bit. But that's gonna wrap up this video. If you're still with me, I do appreciate your time. Maybe we should change the channel to Rambling Guy Joe. I know I 
seem to talk a lot and sometimes can get off subject a little bit. Uh, but I, I do appreciate you watching and I hope that my videos are helpful and answer some questions for you. Uh, basically, this is just a hobby for me. I enjoy doing it. I like to share with you my experiences and thoughts on Chevy trucks and truck sales and trailers and towing. Uh, so just give you an idea of in my little corner of the world here in Erie, PA, kind of what I do day to day. Uh, any questions or comments, please let me know. I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, I've got some other video ideas in mind I'd like to do. Um, I recently upgraded my zero turn mower. So I, I do have a new X Mark laser here, 60 inch uh, with an UltraVac and a striper. And I have a, I got one over there, it's 20 years old. And I'm gonna get ready to sell that one pretty quick here. So I was thinking about maybe doing a little comparison of uh, you know, 20 years with X Mark and uh, similarities and differences, things like that. So uh, it's kind of what I'm all about. But thanks for watching. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you later. Take care.